Behind the gates of Frontierland is the inspirational America of the past century. Here is the treasure of our native folklore. The songs, tales and legends of the big men who built the land. While most guests think that the Frontierland theme is focused on America's 19th century Wild West decades, this area actually gives a prominent nod to America's 18th century Revolutionary War era. The last major addition to Frontierland's roster of varied vessels, the majestic Columbia is, as described in Disneyland's big attraction poster, a full-rigged, three-masted sailing ship that takes a voyage of discoveries on the rivers of America. That voyage began in 1958, the year the ship was dedicated under the supervision of Walt Disney and naval officials. For most of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the Columbia was a D-ticket attraction, occasionally upgraded to an E. The ship's design was inspired by the original Columbia, a privately owned sloop that in 1790 became the first American windjammer to circumnavigate the globe. To some nautical experts, however, the actual design is closer to that of a famous Columbia contemporary, the Bounty, the infamous ship captained by William Bly and commandeered by the mutinous Fletcher Christian in 1789. Since the designs for the Bly's bounty were indeed examined during the construction of Disneyland's Columbia, it's possible that the park ship is a blend of both classic vehicles. Whatever its backstory, the Columbia is a wonderfully appointed replica, accurately capturing the spirit of the great age of sail, even if it doesn't accurately replicate the propulsion of that time. Despite appearances, engine power, not wind power, drives the ship. The ship's main mast towers 84 feet, the decks hold 275 to 300 guests, and the 110 foot long hull displays 10 cannons, one of which is fired occasionally during the 12 to 14 minute tour around Tom Sawyer Island. To accommodate the addition of such a large vessel on the Frontierland waterways, the park added a new dock and landing, Fowler's Harbor, to the southwest corner of the rivers of America. Today, the Columbia sails in daylight hours with narration and sailing music as accompaniment. At night, it has figured prominently as the pirate ship in Phantasmic. Occasionally, it has also been transformed into a ghost ship for Halloween-related special events. The Columbia is still rightfully considered one of the proud flagships of Disneyland's diverse fleet. When Walt Disney decided that the rivers of America needed more river traffic and wanted another large ship to join the Mark Twain, he asked Joe Fowler, who was Disneyland's construction supervisor and a former naval admiral to pick a historic sailing ship for inspiration. After examining every maritime museum in the country, Fowler recommended the first American sailing ship to go around the world, the Columbia Redivia. However, there is only one known picture in existence of the original Windjammer. Wet engineers used it, along with research materials from the Library of Congress, to design the Columbia. Architect Ray Wallace was commissioned in 1957 to work with Fowler in creating the construction plans. The ship was constructed at Todd Shipyards in San Pedro, California, where the Mark Twain's hall was built a few years earlier. After Fowler told Disney that it was customary to put a silver dollar under each mast before it was set, Disney personally put a silver dollar under each of the Columbia's three masts. For the ship's christening on June 4, 1958, Fowler was dressed as a sailing captain of the 18th century, while the Mouseketeers appeared as his crew. Since then, the sailing ship Columbia has had many extensive refurbishments, but the only major change has been the addition of the cruise quarters exhibit in 1964. On January 11, 2016, the sailing ship Columbia, along with other attractions and shows along the rivers of America, closed temporarily for the construction of a Star Wars-themed land. The attraction reopened in summer of 2017. Passengers wait for the 110-foot-long ship, which departs every 25 minutes, inside a sheltered area called Frontier Landing, located in the Frontierland section of the park. The waiting area, which the 84-foot-tall Columbia shares with the Mark Twain Riverboat is made to resemble a real dock with cargo deliveries sharing space on the dock. Historic United States flags are displayed at the attraction's entrance. Passengers board the full-scale replica of the original sailing ship Columbia by climbing stairs, also known as the Brow, up onto the main deck. 
Once on board, they can visit a nautical museum below deck, which shows what life was like for the 1787 crew. In addition to the galley, pantry, dry stores, and sick bay, there are quarters for the crew, bosun, and bosun's mate, first mate, captain, and surgeon. Once the ship casts off, it begins a, its voyage around the rivers of America. The ship, which has three masts and rigging but rarely unfurls its sails, is powered by a compressed natural gas engine. It runs along the same track as the Mark Twain, hidden by green dye in the water. The captain provides a tongue-in-cheek running commentary as he calls orders to his crew, while recorded background music plays a selection of nautical songs such as Blow the Man Down. As the ship passes Fort Wilderness on Tom Sawyer's Island, a Columbia cast member fires two 12-gauge blanks from one of the ship's 10 cannons. The fort also had a cannon that used to fire back. Where you may see how sailors of the 1790s lived and worked while on the open sea. The original Columbia, a 10-gun, three-masted ship of 212 ton, left Boston Harbor on her maiden voyage in September 1787. She sailed to the Pacific Northwest, Hawaii, China, and continued around the world, returning to Boston Town almost three years later. Journey with us now, just as our hardy forefathers did in the days of wooden ships and iron men. On her maiden voyage around the globe, carrying the flag of young America, the Columbia sailed around Cape Horn and turned north, skirted... The engine controls. Hand signals that the cast members use. The Columbia and dry dock. The Columbia on dry rivers of America.